What are some of the applications? So in hydrological studies, we can use hydrogen and oxygen to begin to identify quantity and sources of water. What I do a lot in my projects are nutrient source tracking, tracking projects where we track pollution and excess nutrients. Uh, we can use nitrogen, carbon atoms, um, boron, and lead. Depending on the investigation, we would pick the isotope that's the most appropriate. Then there are also paleo temperature and paleo pH projects that can be done with some of uh, these isotopic ratios. And here in the figures, I have represented projects of non-point source and point source projects where we would use the stable isotopes to determine um, if we have uh, a point source where it's coming from or a non-point source and what those variety of sources can be. And then I also have some groundwater examples here where uh, radiocarbon can be used to determine whether or not there's been a change in hydraulic head, which um, is very useful with quantity. So those are two water examples. So some radiogenic applications. So geochronological studies, uh, carbon, uranium, thorium, strontium, these all help put things in their place in time. Groundwater studies, we can use the radiogenic isotopes of strontium, carbon, and lead to do investigation as far as plume extent, uh, impact assessments, the bio-based content. So we can suggest how plant-based a product is, whichever the product may be, it could be a toothbrush or a soap. Um, we can measure that radiocarbon and suggest whether or not this is sourced from a modern plant or uh, a petroleum source or a blend.